Ben Askren Let's here do in it. Bristol. Okay, this is so exciting. Okay, so it's it's currently live, 1.02 p.m. Eastern yeah. time. Yeah. In around, what, six, so seven hours? So it's 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Beat the Street starts. Uh, so I'm guessing- MSG Theater, Hulu, uh, Hulu Theater. Hulu Theater at yeah. Madison Square Garden. I'm thinking I'll probably go on around, right around 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. You are competing against Jordan Burroughs. Yes. In a wrestling match. Yeah, in a wrestling this match. This is real. No, it's exciting. This isn't like a, a work. This is a shoot. This is a shoot, yeah. We don't do works in, in real wrestling. Okay, but so the... Well, it's not to my knowledge. I don't know of one that's ever happened. And and I, I expect nothing less from you. But here's the thing. You're competing in seven or so hours. Why are you here? Well, I, I, I want to promote the event. Um, Incredible. I want to promote the sport of wrestling. Uh, I mean, that was, you know, if you talk about all my motivations that led me to take this match... Uh, there's a bunch of them, but one of the, one of the biggest ones is to promote sport of wrestling. That's where I came from. That's where so many MMA champions have came from, and the sport of wrestling just does something. Uh, it teaches great lessons to kids, and then on top of that, you beat the streets, which is a great charity. Uh, they're doing great things for the kids, and so you know those two things are tied in. And so, listen, if I'm going to do it, I need to promote it. I need to get out there and tell people how great wrestling is for kids, what a great job Beat the Streets is doing. In New York City, they've added 150 high school wrestling programs and 3,000 high school wrestlers in the last decade. So they've been around 10 years. Wow. Yeah. I, I actually wrestled in the initial Beat the Streets. It was on the Intrepid in, on the Hudson River in New York Harbor. Uh, I wrestled in the very first event they ever had. And how long ago was that? That was 2010, May of 2010. And so for something like this, considering the opponent, mm -hmm. and this is a, a charity and an event yeah. that's near and dear to your heart, how much do you actually train for it? Or is this just part of the training for your upcoming fight as well? Um, I, I would say a little bit of both. I mean, obviously, this forced me to take my training a little more serious in the last month. Usually when I have a fight coming up about 8, 10 weeks out, I, I'll take it a lot more seriously. I'll train no matter what all the time. Uh -huh. But I like get, get real serious. So for this, uh, I threw it, obviously threw a few extra wrestling workouts in the week. I kept up my strength conditioning. I, I was still hitting mitts with Duke a little bit. So you know all that stuff. I had to get my diet down a little bit because I had to make... 174 pounds yesterday. Okay. Um, so it just, it just allowed me to take things a little more serious. So I think it was good. And as far as nerd, like this is a big deal. This is Jordan Burroughs. You've never Jordan competed Burroughs, against him. One of the best to ever do it. Yes. Uh, Olympic gold medalist. Are you nervous? No, I don't. I don't get nervous anymore. At I, I, all. I did away with it. No, it's like, listen, I'm going to go out and compete hard. I'm going to win or I'm going to lose. That's what's going to happen. And I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to go on about my life. Wow. Nothing yeah. at all. There's like no anxiety. I'm, ex I'm really excited. You know excited. what? I started getting excited Saturday. I coached the Freestyle State Tournament for uh, Ask Wrestling Academy in mm -hmm. Wisconsin. Saturday night, I drove home. I had to start my weight cut process. And on the way home, I just started getting really excited. Like, I love to compete. And so I started getting really excited. Like, I get to wrestle Jordan Burroughs on Monday. Yeah. I mean, not a lot of people have the opportunity to just get, essentially kind of get called out. Beat the streets said, would you do this? And I said, yes. Right. To go challenge one of the best guys <laughs> of all time that does something. And they just offer me this opportunity. So, yeah, I started getting excited. Would you call this a dream match for you? A dream opportunity? Yeah. I mean, obviously, it would be like much more, from a wrestling standpoint, for a winning or losing standpoint, probably a lot better for me in 2010, 2011, right. when I was, you know, at it more uh, full time. Um, but nevertheless, I'm around wrestling all the time. I coach at AWA, I coach at the Badger Regional Training Center in Madison. Um, so I'm around it on a very frequent basis. And so, you know, just put extra few extra wrestling workouts in and let's uh, just go see what happens. And, and, and you have trained with him though, right? I have. So yeah. And, and after I retired okay. in November of 17, I, I just wanted to go wrestle with Jordan Burroughs. I want to see what it felt like. I watched this guy for years. I never worked out with him. So uh, I knew the assistant coach in Nebraska. I bought my plane ticket. I flew down to Nebraska and I, oh. I worked out with him for four days because I wanted to. And what was that like? It was awesome. It was fantastic. Who and got I mean, the better of who? Uh, he got the better of me. Really? He, he, Errol, he's the best in the world. Yeah. Of course he got the better of me. I don't know. You're an Olympian yourself. I, you know, I, I made him fight for it. I made him right. work for it. And obviously there's some positions I'm better than him at. But, you know, to over the course of a four days time span to get the better of the best right. in the world, I mean, that would be really difficult to do. I, I think the thing I, I, you know, I got insight into how he works and how he does what he does. Um, and, it, you know, it led me to see why he's the best in the world. And that's, you know, I like being around people like that. Um, it was fascinating. You know, he tried picking my brain on the certain positions that I was good at. And so uh, it was just a really good experience. And so, as you may know, a couple of weeks ago, he was on this program. Yeah. And before he came on, the night before, I got a text from you. Uh -huh. Don't don't try to start things. There's only respect here. Yeah. There's nothing. Absolutely. But lately on Twitter, I've been seeing a bit of a back and forth between <laughs> the two. So what's happening uh, here? Well, he instigated. So, I, you know, I'm not going to back down. I got to go after him on Twitter. Uh, but that being said, yeah, I didn't want I didn't want people to make this to be like you know, an angry feud. Like okay. 
I like the guy. I respect the guy. That doesn't mean I'm not going to go out and try to kick his ass or pin him. I'm right. definitely going to try to do those things. Um, and I think you know he's got the same feeling about it, right? He's going to try to beat me up. And, but that doesn't mean we can't still have the same respect and kinship that we did prior to the event or right after the event. Um, and, and I just feel like the world of MMA and the world of wrestling are a little bit different in those aspects. There's, there are, there's a lot of bad blood in mixed martial arts. And in wrestling, especially at the highest levels, you just don't see it because... I think these guys have to spend so much time with each other, traveling overseas, wrestling foreign countries, that it just kind of, I don't know if it gets, when you're just around someone, like, yeah. honestly, Ariel, if you probably forced me to be in a practice room with George Masvidal for a year, we'd probably end up being friends. Yeah. You know, even right. though I think he's kind of an idiot. Right. Uh, and so that's kind of, I think that's what happens in wrestling. Am I overstating this by saying that I can't recall like a non-Olympic wrestling match that has generated this much buzz like I, I honestly and, and i will not claim to be a wrestling expert yeah um like, like when was the last time like a, a a non a random event like this is not for any sort of olympic i, I don't think so i think right? you, i mean obviously NCAA, it's a big deal yeah the ncaa championships is on espn every year that's a really big one but this is like a one-off one-off yes as right? far as one-offs are concerned i can't remember anything like this why doesn't wrestling do sort of you know this this sort of new thing that bjj is doing these yeah, days it's hard i tried twice i tried to i tried helping out with two professional leagues yeah um you know what? It's really challenging because wrestling still has the Olympics and everyone, all the best guys in the sport look at that as the pinnacle. So then if you ask them to do a one one match, it's like, well, I have this tournament or that tournament or I'm preparing or whatever. And it's really hard to get them together or, oh, I might have to wrestle this guy to make the world team this year. Or I might right. have to wrestle that guy to make the Olympic team. And I think that's a really, so wrestling, though, you know, it's a really tough thing to get guys to agree to something because you know, with any professional league, the day you started out, it doesn't really mean anything. It takes years sure. for it to mean something. Um, and that's kind of the, the battle, right? I hope at some point it happens. It just hasn't happened yet. Any talks of that right now? There's um, like a million BJJ there was, ones. Yeah, I mean, there was a guy, There was a one-off event that was supposed to be the first one of its kind, uh, maybe in November, I think it was, but it hasn't really gone anywhere. Okay. You know, I think, the, I think the reason, I mean, obviously there's the money thing too, right? In order to have an event, you have to make it profitable. Sure, sure. Um, we beat the streets. I think everyone, they love this event every year because it's a really cool event. They love the cause. I mean, like I said, beat the streets has started 150 high school programs. I mean, the number the number is just outstanding. And obviously there's just not beat the streets New York. That's just in New York. There's right. beat the streets, LA and Chicago and Baltimore and all these other sites. Um, so I think it's a, you know one event every year that the wrestling community can kind of get behind. And uh, you know the biggest stars show up tonight. We're gonna have um, David Taylor and Kyle Snyder and Jaden Cox and Yanni Diamakahalas. I mean, there's are they be, competing or they're, they're competing? Yes. Oh wow! The best in the world, the best in the world, uh, the best Americans in the world are right. competing tonight. Wow. Yes. Uh, one interesting and fun byproduct of this match being put together is is it has started a feud between Chael and Jordan Burroughs. Yeah, I didn't, What's really, going I didn't on there? really love that. What happened? I didn't, what didn't you love? Chael's. I did. Chael's okay. Words? Here's uh, here's the both of them had a lot of truth in what they were saying. Truth, now I, I like saying truth, but some things don't always need to be said. Okay. And so I felt like they kind of put each other down, essentially, both of them. And I just felt so like- So it started with Chael extending an offer, right? Correct, because after Jordan was on your show. That's right. Yes. Uh, he said he's gonna fight at least once in MMA. Yeah. And then Jordan's like, yeah, add a zero. Yeah. Did you feel like that was rude? Well, so Chael felt like he was spitting yeah, in his of face. Course. So, okay, so well, let's start out with Number one, and this is the part where Jordan made the mistake, is Jordan said, this is not about money. I just want to go do this. Uh, so then if you're going to, if you're going to say that, right. then someone offers you $50,000 for one night's work, which, hey, for most people, that's great. Yeah. And if you're, if you're saying it's not about the money, not then to come back about the money, that's kind of like, well, you can't come back about the money when you said the money didn't matter. True. So that, that's really difficult. And then, you know, there was a lot... Uh, the amateur wrestling system in America does not generate a lot of its own revenue. That's kind of what Chael was saying, right? There's a lot of people who donate to, they want to see, they love Penn State, they might donate to the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club or right. the Living the Dream Metal Fund, like Chael was talking about. And that's true. But he, Chael didn't need to put it down so hard, in my opinion. Uh, you know, listen, if a rich guy loves Penn State and he wants to give money to Nittany Lion Wrestling Club so people can train for the Olympics, he could do that, right? There's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. Um, so I just felt like he didn't need to go so hard on that point. Um, and then on top of that, I think Jordan, if you probably found, you know, found some way to find his real value. Now, it's hard that it's just one fight, right? Because no one wants to put someone on for just one fight. Right. Um, but it probably would be greater than $50,000, in my opinion, because he just has such a great personality. He's got a really good following. I think he would be worth a little more than that. 
you believe him? Because I got a lot of people afterwards saying, oh, he just says that to put his name out there, but he doesn't really yeah. want to fight. Well, I, I spent four days with him. Okay. We discussed this issue. Oh, okay. I, I would, that was back in 2017. 18. So 18. beginning of 18. So okay. we're, you know, a year and a half ago. Listen, I, didn't, I haven't spent years with him, so I can't totally read through him. Right. I felt like he was genuine about it. I felt like I feel like with most most wrestlers, they see other guys they either competed with in college, high school, wrestled against, going and having a lot of success. And they obviously, you know, for him, he's the king of the wrestling world. Mm. He sees other guys having success. I mean, he probably killed the guy like Marty Usman. Right. I mean, it probably wasn't competitive. And he says, "Well, damn, that guy's the best in the world." Or, or Colby Covington. Uh, Colby Covington sucks compared to me. I could kill that guy. You know, he's probably those thoughts are obviously going through his head. And he sees these guys having success, so obviously there is that intrigue. From a guy who's had that much success, there's an intrigue to see, well, how could I do? Right. Now, for him to go reach those levels, he's got to put two, three, four years into this to build himself up because no one goes from zero and then they go to the top, right? right. That just doesn't, that's not how the sport works. But if I'm like a coker, sort of like what he did with Aaron Pico, yeah. wouldn't you just pay him a couple years, keep him in your sort of system, yeah. and then try to build him? But but Jordan himself said he doesn't want to do it as a career. He said he wants to do one, maybe yeah. two, right? He didn't say, so if Jordan said... I want to do this as a career. I'm sure he'd have offers tomorrow. Right. I'm absolutely sure of that. Uh, but he didn't. And the other thing is, obviously, now he's been competing at a high level in wrestling. I think this is well, his first world championship is 2011. So this would be his eighth or ninth world championships he's been to. Um, you know, at that point, he's been training at that level. I'm sure that I'm not, I'm not going to say I can't guarantee. I don't think he wants to do it for another 10 years. Okay. I mean, I, that would just be my guess. And so, uh, so I like that that back and forth between Chael and Jordan. I didn't really love it. I like both those guys. Yeah. So to see them go at each other like that, I didn't, I couldn't really get into it. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. Um, this kicks off a big two month <laughs> stretch for you. Cause obviously Las yeah. Vegas, July 6th, yeah. Jorge Masvidal. Oh, that's two, two months from today. Yeah. I didn't think How about that. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, you have never fought in Vegas. I did my last fight. Oh, right. Yeah. Dummy. Um, okay. So your but first time international fight week, of course. Yeah. And you went to the press conference. You went to the press conference. He didn't go to the press conference. I spoke to him after the press conference. Chicken. Uh, but by the way, did you ever find out why? No, I've never, I, I mean, no, I didn't ask. Okay. Um, he said he has a reasonable excuse why he couldn't go, but you killed it. Like yeah, you didn't I really, you didn't really need a dance partner there. I mean, listen, all he his whole vocabulary consists of four letter words. He's not going to add a lot to the press conference, for God's sake. But it's good to have a, a foil. It is, but he's not going to add a whole lot to it. In is your foil so, up there? Yeah. So I mean, I, I did well on my own. Okay. Um, but he really like he was on the show a couple of days he's later. Mad. It's so funny. He d he does not want to talk about you. Like <laughs> he threatens to end the interview when I bring he you. He did. Up. Yes. Oh really? Yeah. That's it. He said, well, he said we're done. done. We're done. One more, and we're done. Well, it was so funny on the Joe Rogan show, and I, I caught clips because my wife was watching part of it. And, you know, Joe was, Joe is a man, of, in my opinion, man of the truth. And George kept trying to get off the topic. And then Joe would say, well, no, 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 I, I don't think you're being fair here. I don't think this is totally true. And it was just, it was funny because he made George respond. And, you know, what you see is, you have, there's no real reason why George is pissed. There's no real reason why George doesn't like me. I, he's somehow created this thing in his head right. and he has all this anger behind it and he can't even put into words what it is do you he think can't he needs that like maybe he's just making this up so well i would say if i had to put words into his mouth for him right i would say he's pissed that a punk white kid uh has came into the ufc and is making over double him and i've had no no history in the ufc and so you know in his head that's unjust and he doesn't like that and that's unfair and, you know, to that, I would say, well, listen, there's a reason I've made my brand so valuable and there's a reason I get paid what I do. And if you look at any type of metrics, which you have, Ariel, so you can verify this for me, is my numbers are looking pretty damn good, George, so suck it. Wow. Do you believe that's it? Uh, that's what I would venture to guess that they okay. have that feeling. I mean, how right. Much get, how much do you get for this fight? If you don't mind me asking. You can Google it. No, but we, we know those numbers aren't On the real. last fight, I, I made 350. That's public knowledge. Is that flat? No, uh, no, no, there's, a, there's that, that show and win together. Okay. Why don't you get rid of the show? You don't need that show win thing. You're a draw. I win every time, so it's all right. Okay, <laughs> that was a good answer. Yeah. Good answer. And what do you think he's getting? Well, I've never, I've never got not paid a, a show bonus. Right. I'm sure uh, a win, win bonus. bonus. Sorry. Right. Uh, his numbers came. I mean, you're right. They publish these stats. Yeah, but so I think always... for his last fight, might have been he might have got 76 and 76. Okay. I think it sounds right. Wow. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. So you're, you're getting like double him if that's accurate. I believe so, yeah. Wow. More than double. But yet, they're not putting you on the poster. It's fine. 
I don't need, I mean, Isn't that a little if silly? they want to sell some more pay-per-views and tickets, they'll put me on the poster. But considering how hot you are right now. You would think. You would think, right? Yeah. Just slap your mug on there. Yeah. Yeah. He also told me that he's been guaranteed a title shot if he beats you. I already explained explain this on Twitter. What? Listen, <laughs> what? when there's one party okay. who's hesitant to come to the table, we have two parties here. Right. Ben says, okay, let's fight. Right. George says, eh, I'm making excuses. I don't want to fight you. Eh. <laughs> so how do you get this party to come to the table to make this happen? Because it was obviously, if you just look at the way this division right. was, right. it was the most obvious fight. Sure. How do you get this party to come? Well, you offer him something, right? You got to offer, you got to make the pot sweeter to get him to come to the table. You got to dangle So they said, there. well... What can we offer him that we'll never have to pay up on? That's the best kind of offer, right? Right. If I said, Ariel, I'll give you a million dollars if you can get down and do a thousand push-ups straight right now. <laughs> well, that's a pretty good offer. Right. But I know you're not going to be able to do that. Right. So they say, well, he, he, here's a title shot. Okay. That sounds great to me. Jo uh, George says that sounds great to me. And he, and he agrees to it. Okay. So they, they, I'm sure they did what they needed to do to get him to say yes. So you believe they have no intention of actually going through this. No, they probably know just like I know that I'm going to whip George's ass and that's going to be the end of it. Okay, so then that brings us to a very interesting thing. If Tyron Woodley, your boy, wins yeah. two weeks prior or one week prior. One week prior. Yeah. yeah. What happens then? Uh, I don't know. I think I think we'll figure it out. Okay. I, th I mean, It's starting it's to just... get to the point where it's like a little bit uncomfortable, no? Really? I yeah. don't think it is at all. I feel like you're both right there. I mean, I don't feel uncomfortable about it whatsoever. I would say, here's, here's my just intuition about it. Okay. I would say if Marty wins whenever he fights Colby, that makes more sense for me to fight him. I would say if Colby wins, mm. the Tyron and Colby's fight makes more sense. That is just that's just what my intuition. That's fair. Is. I don't know that that's true. I don't know that that's who she's gonna go with. That's just kind of what it feels like to me. Would you be okay with that? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. You just fight someone else in the meantime. I would probably try to fight Marty if he lost. Oh right. Yeah, because that's he. You know, Marty would probably bump down to number one or number two ranked, and okay. I would probably at that point be at number three or number four. So it would make a lot of sense. You have it all figured out. I mean, nothing to worry about. You you know when you get to the point, I am you understand that <laughs> there's going to be creative things that have to happen to get to where you want to get to. Right. And it's not all going to be like you go to one and then two and then three and then four, right? There's going to be options, and you, you so. When I get there, I'll figure it out. But you do want... I have to, faith that I will figure it out. You do want to win the UFC title. Absolutely. That is an important we'll thing. We'll get figured out. Okay. I can't tell you exactly how to, I did tell you one time, yep. uh, I'm going to fight George St. Pierre in the spring in Montreal. Yeah. I did say 2019. I think it's going to be 2020. Oh, you still believe it? Yes. Really? Yeah. What? I think I was a year off. You know, that was my, my psychic I intuitions. I was feeling spring. I was feeling the Bell Center. I was feeling Montreal. And I think I was one year off. You think you'll fight George St. Pierre at 170 pounds? That's what I'm feeling. A year like. from now. Yes. How are you going to get him out of retirement? I don't know. I'll figure it out wow. when we get there. This is something. <laughs> I was not expecting this. Uh, because honestly, I don't know which one is more of a long shot. When you said it back then, remember, because you weren't even in the U.S. Yeah, it wasn't then. anywhere. Uh -huh. You were retired, like, yeah. and, and no one thought that you'd be able to settle your differences. Yeah. Or now that he's retired, it's probably easier now because you're in the UFC and that's the biggest yeah. hurdle. Yeah. What, what makes you feel like this is going to be a thing? I just feel, I don't know, something, something about it just feels right. I mean, uh, if I win another, if I beat up George and then win the UFC title, you know, th there's a debate for who the best welterweight of all time is. Right. Um, and me and George can settle it in Montreal, spring of 2020. What's a bigger, like, dream scenario for you? The George fight, which you've talked about, or the Khabib fight? Wait, you mean, because uh, you've said... Probably George. I mean, Khabib would be awesome, too, but I think probably George. Why? That's who I, you know, like when I started my MMA career, he was on the top of the welterweight divisions. That, that's who I'm looking at. I'm saying, okay, if I'm going to go be the best, that's the guy right. right there. And so year after year, I'm looking at him, looking at him, you know, and then I get done with my Bellator contract and the UFC thing doesn't work out and I go to one championship. Well, George is still on top. I'm right. still looking at George. Uh, and then, you know, and then after I signed with one, I had a fight. Or and I think, I think I believe that's when his retirement was somewhere in there. But it's still like no one really believed George was actually retired. Right. You didn't believe it. I didn't believe it. And then it, it took him four years, but he came back, and then he disappeared again. And so I, I don't know. I just I feel like I feel like the Khabib George thing was real, mm -hmm. and I don't know why it fell through. Mm -hmm. Probably some type of money negotiations, some type of. Khabib's twenty-seven and zero. He just beat up Connor. He's got a lot of heat. If George comes in and beats up Khabib and then says I'm done again, then that's going to be. Terrible for the UFC to market Khabib in the future. So right. probably something there. Um, so I, I think that's probably what happened. You don't believe him this time, that he's truly retired? No, I do not believe that. Wow. This do is, you? Uh, this, your head. this time I actually sort of believed him. Why is he still training all the time, though? 
Yeah, because he's George. What else is he gonna do? He's kind of like he's 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 a self. He needs to get married and have some kids or something. Yeah. What do you think? The kids are keeping busy. That's true. But he really <laughs> has like. I, I don't say this in a mean way. Yeah. He lives a selfish life, right? Because it's all about you him. You have to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when you're competing. You're right. But he's not even competing now. He's just like staying in or shape. Or is he? Or is he? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Have you floated this idea to the, the brass? No, I have not. Okay. I figure when time comes, we'll get to it. I mean, if, if, I, if, I, don't, if I can't go win a UFC belt, it's a moot point. Sure. Right? Sure. Uh, because if, I, uh, you know, if I'm 19 and 2, George doesn't want to fight me. How are things with Dana? I feel like we really turned the corner in Atlanta. Uh, really? I feel like things were really good there. I mean, we had like five picture, words. We haven't had... really talked since then. But really? Yeah. I mean, talk I, gave, I gave him a kind of like a bro hug. Type yeah, it was thing. nice. That was funny. Yeah. You didn't talk <laughs> backstage? We did not. I'm trying to remember. I don't want to misquote. I don't think, no, I don't, I don't believe so. Or maybe okay. just a, hey, how, how's it going? I feel like we're in a good spot. I think I'm in a good spot, yeah. You don't feel like he's coming after you? Like, you don't feel like, like the Robbie thing where you're kind of being set up? I think I'm in a good spot. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to talk about it too much. Uh, no, I, I, there's just nothing, there's nothing to report. There's nothing to report. No. <laughs> I haven't had a conversation with him. I haven't met with him. It's like there's just it's just nothing to report. Do you ever have moments where you're lying down and you think to yourself, perhaps you 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 turn to your wife and say, "I can't believe how things have turned out for me here." I mean, it's really unbelievable. I can't get over it. A year ago today. Let's say a year ago today. What was I, I say doing? this with the utmost respect? Yeah. You were kind of a non-factor in this sport. You were done. You were but retired. I was, now happy, you're like yeah, the I hottest thing. I was perfectly happy doing how what did, I was doing. It's almost unheard of how things have turned out for you. Yeah, I, I would say it's, a, it's a drastic turn of events. Um, I don't know. I would say I would say a year ago today, I was perfectly content in what I was doing. What were you doing? Uh, I think I can't remember if we sold our house on April 31st or May 31st. Any of those months. There's no April 30th then. Sorry, I didn't. That was dumb of me. Um, I was probably coaching wrestling, being really happy coaching wrestling. And uh, we were probably trying to move into a house, debating whether we were going to rehab it or not. Right. Some, trying to build my disc golf course. You built a disc golf course? Yeah. I got, nine, I got nine holes. I got six more kind of cut out. We're going to finish 18. I got a uh, world Where champion. Paul McBeth is going to come to my house and play in June. <laughs> then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, he's going to set the course record. Then I'm going I'm to erase it because I, I want to be able to set my own course record. Sure, sure. Now, where's the house? It's in your house. Well, my pro not in my house, okay. around my in around your, my house. Really? Uh, uh -huh. How big is your property? Eleven acres. Holy smokes! Yeah. Where's that? Well, I can't tell you the exact address. Okay. I'm only a weirdo no, showing up. No, no, no. But like, like if, if if you want to come to the house, I will give you the exact address. Will you? Would you invite me to your house? You're, you're invited. I appreciate that. Formally invited. Um, uh, it's in Delfield, Wisconsin. So we have we're actually building the wrestling academy on the property also. Really? Yes. We Holy bought a commercially smokes. zoned lot so we could do this. Okay. Um. Wait, but is it in a neighborhood? It's not. No, it's eleven acres. Wow. Yeah, 11 acres is big. You can't have a neighborhood with 11 acres. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> well, maybe, lot, yeah. <laughs> so we like, I mean, we have a couple houses around us. Right, there's still businesses on the one side. Okay. Uh, but there's a lot of woods, a lot of hills. And wow. uh, it's roughly two miles from where our, previous, our, our current academy exists. Okay. So we'll end our rent there and move into the one we're building. So, you, so you'll literally never have to leave your house? That's the plan. I don't really like people. So yeah. my wife gets mad, but I'm like going to go through disc golf, go in, go in my basement, do my podcast, go to my wrestling practice, do my wrestling practice. And Incredible. you know, have some food delivered and never leave ever. That's unbelievable. <laughs> and and so the 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 disc golf course, who designs it? You design Me. it? Like you sit there? So I, Errol, one thing I I had a bunch of goals by the time I was um, thirty years old, and one of them was to play seven hundred fifty disc golf courses. Okay. Which I did at thirty day, thirty years in one day. So okay. The day after I got it. Seven hundred. Um, so I had seen everything in disc golf. I, I'd venture to guess I'm. You know, played more disc golf courses than probably everybody, about 10 people. Wow. Um, so I've seen, you know, and that was my goal is to see everything so I can see how they're constructed, how they're done, and then build the best one possible. The only thing I don't have on my property, I wish I had some type of water feature. I don't have that. Besides that, I have everything I need. It's perfect. Holy smoke. Oh, and, and there are 750 disc golf courses? Oh, there's like 5,000. In America or in uh, the world? In the world, I think there's like 5,000 in America. I think it's about 4,000. I get, that's my guess right now. Okay. I haven't looked. Before. Outside of America, which country is most into disc golf? Japan's got a lot, okay. but nowhere else in Asia, and then most of it's uh, European. Okay. So all of the, um, Nor uh, Sweden's got a whole bunch. I believe Who Norway. Who introduced you to this? Uh, a few friends on my college team played it. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. And well, you still play with them? Uh, they still play. I mean, they live, they live other places. Oh, okay, they still okay. play. Uh, but yeah. So then I became, I became obsessed, like I do with a lot of things. Yeah. I took ninth in the Amateur Worlds twice. I took second in the Amateur Nationals. <laughs> When's the last time you competed? Uh, 2012. Because I had kids in Academy and stuff, yeah. Okay. I, took, I took second in Amateur Nationals 2010, I believe. Is there a Pro Nationals? 
There is, yeah, absolutely. You be a pro. This guy, Paul McBeth, is coming to my property to play. He's literally the best guy in the world. He How did you get in touch with him? Twitter or you Facebook? just reached out to him. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he reached out to me. I don't remember how it was. Does he know who he's, you he's are? He's an MMA fan. Oh, is he? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. He must be loving this. <laughs> That's incredible. Uh, absolutely. And and would you say you are more passionate about that than wrestling? No, 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 no. I that or MMA? Maybe disc golf more than really? MMA. Really? <laughs> Can you watch it on TV? Not really. There's some There's some internet get it on like ESPN Plus or something. Well, they, I Seems guess like these, the guys, thing. these guys uh, were going to take me and we were going to do a disc golf tour of the ESPN property today and it kind of got nixed or something. Oh, really? Yeah. How would you do a tour if there's no course? Well, they were going to say, like, you know, oh. hit that thing over there, right? I okay. mean, so that's how disc golf started out. Now we're getting way off topic. <laughs> no, I've actually uh, Disc golf started by. out because in the Whammo factory, okay. right, when they made the official, uh, a Frisbee and a disc are different things. Okay. So in the oh, Whammo really? factory, they made a Frisbee, right, we play catch with. Yeah. And after work, all these guys would go out and they'd say, okay, let's see how many shots it takes to get to there. You know, and they'd all, like, play, buddies, play together. And then they're like, wow, this is cool. We should make this real game. So then they went to the park, and then they would mark trees, right? This, this, the whole the tree is hole number one. That one's two, three, four, so on and so forth. And then eventually, obviously, then they created like a real game with a basket and a tee box. And wow, stuff. yeah, okay. So is this your favorite sport, like non-combat sport to play? Oh, absolutely. without a doubt. Yeah. Do your kids play it? Uh, my six-year-old has now started throwing discs. Yeah, it's fun. How's it going? Uh, she she got a pretty good throw for a six-year-old. Okay. <laughs> how how many kids do you have? Three. Three. Yeah. Three. All girls. Girl. Girl. Boy. Girl, girl, boy. Okay. Yeah. It's a weird thing with the wrestlers. Huh? You guys all have girls. Yeah. Why do you think that is? The, you... boy, the boy is obsessed with, we have a mini disc golf basket in the basement. It's got these little tiny ones, you know? Okay. He just goes and grabs them and runs around with them all day. It's he's like super young. He's the only one, yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Do, 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 your, do your girls kind of understand what you do and like who you are? Mm, not really. Not quite, no. right? My, you... my oldest wrestles at our academy. Oh, wow. We're five to nine year olds class. It's really kind of informal. Right. Easy, yeah. Will you let her watch your, your fights? I think she might have watched the last one. We didn't ever watch. Uh, but the, the, when, I used to, when I used to go to Asia all the time, yeah. and we didn't want to explain that I beat up human beings for a living, because that's kind of weird for a kid, sure. I think. We would always tell her I, I went and fought tigers. Really? So yeah, she, then she, every night before they went to bed, they would want some type of story about how we went in the jungle <laughs> and fought tigers. <laughs> <laughs> so that is more, you, you feel like that's more suitable for her than you beating up another human being? I feel like, yeah. Okay, but now yeah, she's I would figured. venture to guess that we would all agree that a human life is more valuable than a tiger life. Although maybe some of those oh, people might like, not touching they that might one. ban me yeah. or something for now. But you showed her the last one. The last one was like your, your, your bloodiest fight. Can I give clarification first? Sure. Amy, did Alice watch my last fight? Oh, no, no, kids at her school were telling her about it. Wow. Yeah, so oh she did not God. watch my last fight. Yeah, I that must be interesting. So that. You, you, you have your daughter come back to school on Monday, and everyone's talking about her dad's fight. Yeah, I think she, said she didn't know what was up. Okay. That was weird. Well, six years old. She's probably like in pre-K or something, yeah, right? Yeah. Kindergarten. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, are, is that it? Three? What? Are we stopping at three? or? Uh, our last one didn't sleep much. Okay. So I, he wore us out. So I yeah. think I'm done. I think I have th- I have the you reverse. Have reverse. Two what? boys and a girl. Oh, nice. And then we're, you know, we you get the. You it's get exhausting. The, and you that, get the mix. Especially get when both. they don't sleep. Yeah, it's tough. Oh, it's brutal. It's tough. Um, and how many siblings do you have? One. I have a brother. He runs a wrestling academy with us. Did he compete as well? Yeah, he's national champ. Really? Mm-hmm. For what school? University of Missouri also. Okay. He won it in 2010. And, and did he ever fight? He never fought. No. Why not? Uh, he had some back issues that like after college, he, he almost didn't wrestle senior year. Okay. He decided to wrestle and won a national title. Um, then he kind of took some time off. He wrestled in 2012 Olympic trials and took fourth. Okay. But then his back issues just really kind of prevented him from training full time. Okay. Yeah. And are you guys close? Yeah, I would say so. Does he, <laughs> does he live near you? Uh, about 45 minutes away. But okay. so like I said, so we have three wrestling academies. He runs the one in Mequon. Uh, so we, you know, I was talking all the time about that kind of stuff when right. we go to wrestling tournaments together, that kind of thing. Does he come to your fights? He is coming to this one. He did not come to the last one. Didn't come to your debut? No, I know. What a bum. Yeah. Yeah. I yelled at him Jeez. about that. I don't know. He went to a wedding in Argentina or something. Uh, get out of here, Max. Okay. Uh, he came to, I believe, two of them in Asia. Uh, and then I think he came to most of my Bellator ones, if okay. I remember correctly. When yeah. you were in Asia, were you ever thinking to yourself, like, what am I doing here? No, I loved it. You did? I actually just saw a picture. Misha Tate put up a picture. She's living in Singapore now. Yes, yes. She put up a picture, uh, and it was her and her kid, and I, I, believe, I don't know if it's her husband or fiancé or whatever, and then they have a really cool apartment, and Maria Bay Sands was in the background. I'm like, damn, I miss Singapore. It, you really liked it? Oh, I love Singapore. Really? Yeah, it's fantastic. Wow. Yeah. Did they treat you well there? Yeah, absolutely. No, no regrets? No, not at all. No, they, they were fantastic. To borrow a phrase, uh, one... Uh, 
they're a little funky. Uh, what do you mean? I mean, this agent certification thing. What is I going on? I didn't read all the way through that, so I don't want to comment on that. Oh. Someone asked me about it earlier, and I'm like, I saw it, but I didn't really read all the way through it. It's a little uh, funny. I mean, just you can't think of this is what I learned over there. You can't think of things through an American centric sure, lens. They fair. do the, it, things are different in Asia. That is for sure. There's a different way of doing things, different customs. So if you try, I remember um, in, in my Sapo fight, the one where he, the no contest where he faked the eye injury. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I got on the mic and I said, yeah, this, I'm sorry, this dude don't want to fight me. Right. Like, there's nothing I can do about that. He's making excuses. And I got booed by everybody. Right. I'm like, I don't understand this. That's what it is. And after the fight, you know, they said that, well, I, that was just me thinking about myself and like, you know, not about the fans who paid their hard earned money to come right. to the fight. And like, you know, like in Asia, you can't say stuff like that. You get booed because you look so rude. Right. So I realized, oh, I, got, I looked really, you know, I was, I, was using, I was using American lens to look at the situation. Okay. So I looked like a jackass. Okay. And uh, so I started, you know, it, it, well, it's interesting because it gives you a new perspective on a lot of things when you look at um, stuff through a different lens. Right. Like, so like when, when you watch them, there's no, you know, like they helped sort of advance your career, yeah. gave you a play. Because Bellator essentially said to you, Thanks, but no thanks. That's not what happened. No? No. What I happened with Bjorn? coming back. Told you them told them. Out. Yes, absolutely. How, how could they have let this happen? What? That was one of their biggest mistakes. Bjorn. The Bjorn era. I didn't give them really two choices about it. I what said, you, I'm out of here. I'm not signing again. But you didn't have a champion's clause? Uh, I mean, I had... Did they have to give you a ble- like their blessing? No, they had a, they had a year... Was it a year matching? Right. A three-month exclusive they or something have, like that? They could have sat on that, right? Yeah, I just kept telling them I wasn't coming back. Why? Because I had stuff to go do. <laughs> in one? No, to prove I was the best in the, in the world. That's what I was going to do. Right. And it wasn't. I already beat everyone in Bellator. I'm I mean, the guys I beat in Bellator are still, yeah. know, what are we, six, Lima, six years later, they're still the best there. I right. Mean, yeah. But I'm surprised that they didn't try to say, okay, at least like we'll, we'll give you the opportunity to sign with UFC, but if you're going to go to one or someone else, we're going to keep you here. By the time I had, by the time the UFC thing had fallen through, yeah. I had a full and complete release from Bellator. Wow. See, that's what I mean. I think yeah. that was a mistake in hindsight. Well, on their I mean, part. Fine turned out right for me. For you, not for them. I think, honestly, I think I can't. This is just my feeling. I don't want to say they didn't want to keep me around, but I, I always felt like they thought one of these guys was going to kick my ass, whether it was oh. Lima, Kreshkov, right. Amasu. They thought. Okay, Ben's not gonna keep getting lucky and taking these guys down every round. He's gonna at some point he's gonna get kneed or kicked or punched or knocked sure. out or something, right? And then off of Ben, we're gonna make a, one of these guys a big star. And listen, that is I don't know that for a fact. That's just me kind of feeling it out. Right. Uh, and that never happened. Yeah. And so when I said, "Hey, I'm out," I think they were like, they might have been like, "Oh, really? Can we really let him go?" But then at the same time, they're like, "Well, what other option do we have?" Okay. Let's let him go. You know, because they looked pretty bad in the Eddie Alvarez yeah, deal. Remember yeah, how yeah, that went down? Yeah, yeah. That they Bjorn didn't really look great in that instance. So I think they were probably worried about something like that happening again. Do you have any idea what happened to Bjorn? Bjorn texted me after my last fight. Come on. I swear to what? God. Let me where's my phone? This is the, you buried the lead. This is the biggest story of the what whole day. Mean? Bjorn let, let texts me, you. He actually is alive. Let me see. Bjorn Please tell us. Okay. Uh okay, yes, right here. Oh my god. He says, odd choice of starts, but that finish was rock solid. Keep talking shit on everyone all the time, everywhere. They don't have the voice now that Connor was exposed. You fill that gap. Wow. Yeah, right? I was yeah. pumped here for, I had heard from him for like five years. I was like, that's awesome. Bjorn just texted out me. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. I mean, I hadn't talked to the guy in. And you wrote him back? Absolutely. What'd you write? I asked him what he was doing, and he's, you know, he's working on uh, What's he working tech on? Tech project of some sort. Okay, so he's out of MMA. Yes. Do you remember when they started that union and it lasted like three days? That was bizarre, wasn't it? That was it? bizarre. That was really bizarre. Let's be honest. Of all the people... No, how awesome choose, is that? The Bjorn text me. Yes, that was, <laughs> it was awesome. awesome. I, I've, to, I've talked to you like four times since that fight. You never brought that up. I never came up. Yeah, I know, but yeah, it's a big know. deal. Now you ask me, now I... Well, because I feel like you guys... I, I guess the consensus was like, or the feeling was that like you left on bad terms with him. Not really. Yeah. You know what, Errol? I guess Dana excluded. I stay on good terms with almost everybody. Yeah. Because I just tell you what I think and how I feel. Right. And no matter what, you're not wondering about me. Right. You're not thinking like, oh, is he being nice to my face and he's talking shit behind my back? You know, you know exactly yes. where we stand. I have and felt so, this. <laughs> and I think that's one of the things that I don't know if you want to say endearing or just honest, like, but you don't get that from a lot of people. A lot of sure. people are going to give you the runaround. And I'm gonna t- we're going we're gonna to know how we uh, feel about each other. Okay. And that's it. So you and Bjorn are cool. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's no hard feelings ever. Sure.
Mm-hmm. Um, Why do you say excluding Dana though? Because like that that because Dana genuinely did, I said I said most people like me because of that. Oh, Dana I see. genuinely didn't like right, me right, right. because of that for many years. I remember you were probably like the first fighter to ever really like threaten to beat me up. I didn't threaten to beat you up. Yes, you but, said come no, to the cage. That's not what I said. Yes, I said. I said, uh, I don't remember the exact words, but it was something, it was a meta, more of a metaphor. Like, I don't want, I want to come on your show about as bad as you want to get in the cage with me. Was that it? Yeah, because you listen, here's, and here's, I, I don't said know. said that the fight well, wasn't let's, let's, very let's go. I thought I asked you a tough question. Let me ask you a tough question. Okay, go ahead. So I think you bashed me after my Douglas Lima fight. That's not a bash. You bashed me. I said me. it wasn't okay. a That's so subjective. Anyways, That's I not. thought you were upset with me because I came unprepared for an interview that you had me on. You had me on right before the Lima fight, and I was eating food. And even afterwards, my wife goes, Ben, you idiot. You were eating food during the interview, and you, you, that, that was an asshole move. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even think about it. You weren't as and good so at then, interviews back then as you so are then, now. So then when you came at me on Monday, I'm like, oh, Ariel's mad that really? I was being an a-hole I'm not and, and eating food on his show and no. looking unprofessional. You think that was it? Well I, no, well, I don't know. Apparently, you don't think but that this, was good. This lasted a long time between us. I don't remember how we squashed it. So then I was in, uh, yeah, I remember because I was tweeting because I was actually visiting, I was visiting Austin, Texas, I believe. Oh, you have a great my, memory. My buddy, Mark Bader uh, and Joe, we were playing some disc golf. And then we were sitting down at a Mexican restaurant and I was tweeting back and forth with you uh, about what you had said. Oh, okay. Because it was right after the Lima fight. And then eventually that night, you, I remember laughing because you banned me from your show. <laughs> <laughs> Try keeping me out, Ariel. Right. You should see the the ban list now. It has grown. How big? Oh, it's gigantic. Tons really? of people. Yeah. No, there's no some people have. Of course. Who? I don't want to say. There's a lot of people. A lot of people on my crap right. list. Um, but I'm happy that we've we squared. I mean, now Absolutely. people think that you're on too much. I would say you're on not enough. They can't have me on enough. <laughs> so you're you're gro- so you have a podcast now, and you I just a couple t- podcasts. Yes, a couple. What's the second one? Well, I started an uh, MMA podcast with uh, oh Brian, my buddy F. Brian, Brian. Brian. the Brian. fight oracle. He has not, I don't believe he's. Uh, I don't believe that he has responded to me on why he does. He does not respond to me. The fight I oracle. Him, I didn't like you. Yeah. So yeah, we started an MMA podcast on Rockfin. Okay. Um, yeah. What is that? I was, I was telling you about. It's it's, uh, it's just a new website. It's me trying to pl- get, get, you know plug. Yeah, absolutely. And you say <laughs> well, here's the hard part is. It does take a few minutes to totally get the idea of what Rockfin's all about. Okay. And if I just give you a 10 second plug, so the, 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 the right. idea is that we're going to give Rockfin is going to give creative people uh, the avenue to get their proper value. Okay. And so uh, I'm one of the first people on that platform uh, and I'm excited for it. So you leave here in like 10 minutes. Yeah, hopefully. actually, I thought this was going to be a short interview, but we, we ended up talking for a long time. So it's good. So I'm going to just have to tell my wife to drive extra fast in New York no, City. Well, okay. I was going to ask, how are you getting back? You guys drove? What what literal roads? I don't know no. what literal roads. <laughs> we're going to put it in the GPS and we're yes. going to go. Okay, now okay, I just want to know what the day's like because I'm actually getting nervous on your behalf. Why would you get nervous? Because you're competing I don't in like actually five re- I don't actually wrestle till you know right around 8 o'clock. Okay, I'm so going to do a little map feature here and see what time. It said when I checked earlier, it was an hour and 59 minutes. Yeah. So hopefully there's no like car accidents or anything. Yeah. Okay, Either so way. let's say it's 2. So let's say you leave here. Yeah. Let's, let's say you leave here in ten minutes, right? There's two hours exactly on the dot yeah. on my phone right now. So you'll arrive in New York City yes. at uh, almost four. Sure. What will you do between four? I think I'm gonna go check into my hotel room, put my stuff down, change it in my clothes, and then we'll. Uh, what are you wearing? Take an Uber. What am, I'm wearing? Jeans and a t-shirt. No, right no. Now. Uh, in the match. Sandals. Look at those yeah. things. As always. Pretty gimmick. Uh, Flip flops, drop tops. Just a singlet and uh, wrestling shoes. No, but like you, you don't have a special one. Uh, I do have a special one. Yes. Sponsors on it. Oh, well, Rudis is my sponsor, my one sponsor. Okay. Um, American flag, something? Uh, I don't know that. what it looks like. I don't, did they send me a picture? I don't think they sent me a picture of what it looks like. I'm wearing brand new Rudis shoes that haven't been released yet, so that's okay. pretty sweet. All right. Uh, so I actually have to meet up with, this is my podcast co-host on the Rudis Wrestling Podcast. I actually always, also works with Rudis, obviously. Um, so I'm meeting him. He's got my gear. Okay. Uh, uh, and then we're going to cruise over to the event, and I'm going to warm up and get ready to rumble. And warm up consists of what? Wrestling. I get to, I get to warm up with Yanni. Okay. You know who that is? No. You need to know who it is. He's special. Yanni, like the, is he like a singer or something? <laughs> no. What is it, what is it, Yanni with curly long yes. hair? Uh, <laughs> he is not. He's a wrestler. He's from Cornell. Okay. Um, he just won the U.S. Open. Okay. Uh, and he's only 20. He's actually facing the number one ranked wrestler in the world from India tonight. Wow. Yeah. Are you guys the main that, event? That, he's the co-main event. Okay, but you're the main event. The main event, yes. All right. And uh, t- how, how long will the match be? Uh, it's, a, it's a wrestling match of six minutes, two, three minute periods. Yeah. And it's freestyle? Are those the rules? Freestyle wrestling, yes. Okay. I haven't wrestled an official freestyle match since 2010. 2010. It's been a while. But this won't count, right? In terms of like an official record? 
I mean, I don't think there yeah. are official records yeah. in wrestling. All right. Yeah, I don't think. I, I just feel like for MMA fans, it's it's better to make it that way, right? There so should. I mean, there should be a better there there. Yeah, I mean, yes, there should be a better database in wrestling that keeps stats and official records and that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, be really cool. But we, unfortunately, we don't have that. Have you ever competed at MSG or the theater? I've been to MSG twice. I've never competed there. What were you there for? Well, when I signed with UFC last November, That's right. that when was, you crashed our set. Yes, that was fact, huge. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Um, and then I went for. Chael versus Van- Chael versus. Vanderlei, maybe? Oh, Bellator. Is that, was that who the yeah, fight? Yeah, yeah. Chael versus Vanderlei? You went to that? Yeah. Just as a fan? I just wanted to go, yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. Where, where did you sit? In the stands? Uh, I think Bellator gave me tickets. Oh, Pretty okay. close. We were down low. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. But this is your first time competing. This is a big deal in its own right. Like, does this mean anything to you? No, I'm just, I'm just excited to wrestle. But it's MSG, New York it's City. fine. How could you be so nonchalant about this? Really? I don't know. I don't what know. do you think he's doing right now? Uh, he wouldn't have come here. Probably doing a thousand. I tried to get him to come yes, here. Yeah, he yes. didn't do this. I think he's. I don't mad know why at me. he's so serious. Why is he mad at you? Because you started the, whole... the thing with Chael. <laughs> no, I... that's not your fault. That's yes, fault. I know. I actually texted him. I was Jordan. Like, yeah. What did he say? I was like, hey man, I hope uh, you know no hard feelings. You know, we shared the same birthday. Buffalo Bills fans. We had a lot in common. Really? Didn't write me back. No. Yes. Oh, and then I reached out to rude. I reached out to the 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 Beats the Streets guy whose name is escaping Jesse? me. Yes, Jesse. Jesse. Okay. And he's like, yeah, he takes things a little personally sometimes. Wow. I did, did you know that I'll, about I'll him? I'll ask him tonight. I'll, I'll mail. Yeah, I hope there's no say, heat. Why are you holding this against Arrow? Yeah. I don't think it's his deal. So what do you think he's doing right now? Do you think he's preparing, or do you think this is just like ah? Oh, I, th- no I think big he's. Deal. You know, I think he's fairly similar to me in the fact that he's really relaxed and. Okay. Uh, he's, probably hang- uh, he's got his kids here. So he's probably hanging out with his wife and kids, is what I would guess he's doing. Okay, so you don't think he's stressed about it? I, w- I wouldn't imagine so. What's your prediction? Can you tell us, like, can we play this in, in 10 hours and say Ben called it on the show? How's this actually going to go yeah. down? Well, I think he's either going to beat me or I'm going to pin him. I mean, that's what, you know, I always said, I, 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 listen, I said, I'm not under the illusion that I'm a better wrestler than he is. I'm, I'm not at this point in my right. life. That doesn't mean I can't pin him, right? So that, that's, where my, that's where my head's at. I know, I know the terms of the battle right now. I know what I have to do to win, and I got to pin him. Okay, so that's your only way to actually win. I think so, yes. Don't let him, because Robbie Lawler, I mean, he slammed you. That's fine. Don't let him do that to you. Ha! <laughs> Golly! <laughs> I was standing next to some people who were watching their first UFC fight, one of which from Missouri, who works with us now. Uh-huh. Uh, her name is Christina. She's great. And I was like, Ben Askren's the man. Watch what he's about to do. And then you got slammed in the first 20 seconds. I felt like a dope. But I went out. I was building him. up was your fine. credentials, Olympian, all this stuff, and then you get slammed by Robbie Lawler. All right, turn in striker turn in extraordinary. The result was great. It was great. Do you still get a lot of crap for that? No. People have moved on. Well, I mean, there's probably some idiots on Twitter, but yeah. Did most... you see him there in Atlanta? I did see him. What yeah. do you say? Just hello. No hard feelings. Uh, no, there's nothing there. It was mm? all good. He's enough. a professional. I mean, he's been to this for a long time. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can't thank you enough for doing this. I appreciate it. It's actually, really cool. I should get going. Yeah, you know? I know. I feel. Like yeah, I mean, I thought you were gonna hold me for like 15 no. minutes. No, I said 45 40... minutes. That was fun. This was nice. I might have to come back to it sometime again. Well, I, I figured, you know, you come all the way here, you make the effort. We need to have a good Let's segment. Get... Did you enjoy it? It was good. Okay. Absolutely. Not great. It was, I think it was great. I think okay. We, I think we talked about a lot of really good topics. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank right. you for doing it. Thank this. you, Ariel. Everyone, Ben Askren, he's competing tonight in literally like three hours against Jordan Burroughs. You notice how the time just keeps going short. You just want to leave. Well, I'm out of here. So yeah, okay, go. go. <laughs> there he is. Look at the poster right there. Ben Askren, Jordan Burroughs, history in the making.